Hi, I'm Melissa, aka The Girl With Beer, and today I'm doing something totally out of my comfort zone. I'm brewing for the very first time in my entire life. I'm not a brewer. I work for a brewery, but I do marketing. I've never done this before. But today is International Women's Day, and all the breweries around town are doing a collaborative effort to brew with women, and I'm one of them! Megan's behind the camera. She's actually a brewer, and thanks to her, I'm here today. Also, thanks to her, I play dress up. Check this out. Everything I'm wearing except my shirt is Megan's. My wonderful boots, my safety goggles, even my knife, okay? I'm ready. <laughs> so today we're starting at home brewing, and then we're gonna be heading to Culture and Fall Brewing. So we're gonna be brewing at three different breweries today. I'm super stoked and super nervous because I've never done this before. Um, well, let's do it. Let's hope for the best, all right? I'm putting on my dirty safety goggles, getting in there. So it's 10 a.m. and we've started drinking. I'm drinking the stout right here. It's called, it's a stout at 10%, an imperial stout. And Megan is it's eating a dip. It's acceptable if you're drinking a coffee. Yeah? If mine looks like coffee, it's acceptable. Yeah? What donut is that? I also got some of my hair in my mouth. <laughs> mm. I can do this daily. Yeah? If this is brewing, eating donuts and drinking beer at 10 a.m. I'm joking, that's not all there is to it. So we're with Hannah, the tasting room manager at Home Brewing Co. And we have some I guess I'm not the first one, but we're just talking about my amazing outfit that I was displaying you guys about, right? And I keep joking about it because Megan oh, told me when she first, like, the first time you ever brewed. Can you tell us what you were wearing? Um, a crop top, um, short shorts, um, sweet fringe boots, and a oh no. Um, we're just kind of hanging out for, for a minute. We'll do a pH and, um, and then set up all the Awesome. Okay. Um, so we're brewing a sour brewed IPA with passion fruit. Um, we're going to be brewing the IPA today um, and blending in our sour work later and adding passion fruit. So we're pretty excited. She's very light in body, really fruity, and have some of that tartness from the um, kettle sour. Pull up and just crack it just a little bit. Oh, you get lift up. Oh, lift up. Yeah. I was like, I thought I was strong. I can't even open this. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah, you can let it uh, run out a little bit faster. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we'll take about a gallon. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, so what we're doing now is just we're we're kind of clearing out the manifold. That's good. Little torch. Oh. Ah! Yeah. Ah! The can't even <laughs> it! I'm not made for this job! <laughs> That's great! So there, so this goes up. Yeah! Okay. Um, and do it again? Yeah, and then now we're just gonna do just a little bit, so I'll hold this. That's good. It's a collaboration. 
Boom! All right. Way better this time. <laughs> Okay, uh, and then if you put this in the pill box, just on top of a keg in there, uh, to cool off. To cool yeah. off. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> so Jacob, why are we cooling off that little sip so we can make the pH off yeah. You can set it anywhere that's, yeah, stable. <laughs> like you're in sample. <laughs> Here's a sample I poured earlier. I'm so proud of it. Just hold it and look beautiful. It looks good to me guys. Let's drink. <laughs> The mash pH matters for a couple, well actually mash pH matters for essentially the whole life of the beer. Uh, you're starting out um, at an ideal mash pH will uh, give you the best uh, efficiency in your mash. That means your, your sugar starts to sugar conversion. It also gives you good uh, uh, work um, uh, viscosity so the, the work will travel through the grain bed efficiently. Um, and um, and avoid picking up any any tannins um, that uh, that could lead to unwanted haze or bitterness in the beer. Um, ideal mash range is from five two to five six. Kind of have a window, a little buffer either way. It goes low as five or as high as five point eight without real consequences. But lower than five and higher than six uh, is where you'll run into issues later on in the brew or, or even during the mash itself. Uh, so this is a fairly nice pH meter, uh, calibrated every every day. So it'll it'll read the the, the high buffer 7.01, and then uh, hit that on off. Okay, so now it's calibrated high. What's the pH of the tap water? It's about eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's really high. And then let it settle. Uh, then the, so then, then the low buffer, uh, low calibration solution is 4.01. So it tells the meter, all right, this is, I know this and I know that. And so now when we take the readings, it'll be able to settle them correctly. Right so I just like dump it in there? Yeah, so then you just kind of put it in there and swish it back and forth and then we let it sit. It changes throughout the year. So in the winter time, um, we're starting USA. We're at five point three nine. That's good, right? That's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Right there. Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. So, yeah, it's a random specification. Ever? It's because I took it. Okay. I took it sample. What's that? I just oh. like this all the way all right, we're heading to Culture Next. We're just finishing up here at Homebrew. Obviously, it's like more of a collaborative effort and more of a fun day for us rather than actually brewing. And I know that I'm not gonna become a brewer in one day. That would be an insult to you. Like, hi, I'm now a brewer. I'm dressed in your clothes, so I must be like legit. How was this experience for you? And how is this different from like where you brew at? So at Modern Times, I'm the only like female brewer um, we do have some awesome ladies down at Special Projects who do a lot of cool stuff with barrels and and some of the rad like funky stuff. And then we have a lot of cool women in packaging and a badass like QA manager. Um, I mean, not even to mention like the cool front of house people. But I'm the only like female brewer there, so it's it's cool to like kind of collaborate with other women and come together collectively on on a brew. Um, I'm excited about the next place we're going to because Alex is a friend of mine and she's actually the head brewer of culture. So um, that's a little bit of a rare thing to see a female brewer, a yeah. female head brewer. Um, so that'll be exciting. It'll be different. Yeah, for sure. And in terms of like a facility, this is a lot smaller than modern times. And like, how do you feel about that? Like, do you ever miss working in a smaller environment? Um, they have their pros and cons, so I definitely miss a smaller environment because you get to do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, the production side, you're kind of mainly just just turning the brew over. It's more about consistency and just kind of putting it out for um, the orders and everything. I mean, we still make awesome beer, but when yeah, you're you smaller, <laughs> it's kind of like you have more flexibility in your schedule and you can kind of play around with things 
little bit more. So for me, this was a really cool experience because I've never actually brewed or had anything to do with it. I've obviously toured many breweries and the one that I work at, I see other people working and I document their work, but I never actually got my hands dirty. Not that I did today either, <laughs> but I did a pH sample, guys. I did a pH sample. So you can definitely see from the video who's the pro and who's the amateur who's never touched a brewing equipment in her life. This is also the kind of day that I try to stand back because I do this stuff every day. Yeah. It's, it's cool to let other women experience who don't necessarily get to and to teach them things and just get them more educated on, on the beer and the brewing process. Yeah, I did notice you, except for your clamping thing, whatever that's called, you did that like a pro, <laughs> like a I've, pro. I've never had an audience or edit and film uh, throwing tri-clamps, so please excuse that. Um, I'll do a better one later, so film it, that, it, it looks It looks great to me. All right, so let's head to the next spot because my arm's hurting. But thanks for bringing me along, Megan. We're only friends on the internet. <laughs> that's a lie. She was at my house today. All right, see you guys at the next brewery. Let's go. Boom.